Hello, and welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. Let's take a moment to acknowledge that the lands that we live on here in London, Ontario, are the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Lunapawak, and Shinantam peoples. I sincerely express my gratitude to the Indigenous peoples and their ancestors for what I and my family have received as settlers on this land. I also would like to acknowledge my ancestors that came before me and sacrificed so that I can have the privilege to sit here with you today. We have an exciting show today, all about health and about wellness through the power of music. Our first guest is a registered dietitian and the founder of Intuition Nutrition, where she helps people discover the joy of eating. This business is a dream come true for Jenna. She uses a gentle, non-diet, weight-inclusive approach to healthy eating and also uses a holistic approach. She's here to talk to us about a couple of events that are coming up very soon. Welcome to the show, Jenna. Thank you so much, Jennifer. So tell us about this dream come true. <laughs> yes, so it started a long time ago. I would say I've wanted to be in this space of the private practice world ever since I became a dietitian in 2013. Okay. And so it's always been kind of this thing on my mind and it seems like whenever I had my children, so it started five years ago, I had my first child uh -huh. on mat leave. I got a little bit more serious about, you know, mm -hmm. taking the leap. Mm -hmm. I got all the things I needed to kind of get myself in order. And then to be honest, I just kind of found it to be way overwhelming. And I thought, okay, now is not the time. And then I just had my daughter in, two, in 2021. Okay. And I decided that now is the time. Mm -hmm. um, I've just really wanted to take my passion and run with it. So it became, you know, a when instead of an if. Nice. And then here we are. And here we are. Here we yes. are. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what people can expect if they come and they contact you and say, Jenna, you know, I, I need some support with my nutrition, with my diet what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that fit is really important. So I do offer a free discovery call for 15 mm. minutes. Mm -hmm. And so that would be kind of the initial step. Um, so that's a chance for us to connect and just to see if, you know, it might be, we might be the right fit for one another. Right. Um, so following that, if um, client chooses to book, they can book an initial assessment with me. And then that's where we really just kind of get to know each other. I'll ask a few questions, kind of dive into the food side of things. And mm -hmm. then what Whatever is important to the client is what's important to me. So we kind of go from there. Um, oh. Yeah, so it's very, you know, um, informal, supportive. I use a very gentle approach. Um, so they can expect to not receive a meal plan or restrictive eating um, guideline. I'm very much an all foods fit dietitian, mm. and that is really important to me. So, well, I want to come back to that because I have some questions about that. Okay. But before that, I want to make sure that we talk about your events. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So, my workshop that I'm hosting this month for the or, yeah June. Sorry, we're at the end of May. <laughs> uh, for the first <laughs> month is called Trust Your Gut. Mm -hmm. So, learning to listen to your body instead of a diet, mm -hmm. and that is a very um, informal small group session. So, I'm limiting it to just four participants. Okay. And that will be held in person at my office, which okay. is on York Street. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that group, we'll learn to kind of reconnect with the internal wisdom that we were all born with when it comes to eating, mm -hmm. rather than looking to external cues like diets or rigid meal plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. And th there was a second event, I believe. Oh, so I do. Yes. Thank you. I do offer other workshops as well. Okay. Um, so mud, um the one is kind of linked to mothers and so it's nurturing a positive relationship with food mama edition uh -huh. and the other is raising intuitive eaters so more um for children okay yeah and so you mentioned that you're you don't you're not a restrictive type of of dietitian mm -hmm. you support people in eating whatever they want to eat because one of the questions i asked you before we started is okay healthy summer eating right what do you suggest right and I kind of was like, well, I actually suggest you to eat the foods that you want to eat. And that is because, you know, food is so much more than just what goes on our plates. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it involves, you know, celebration, eating for comfort. There are so many factors, yes. right? So I would encourage you to eat the foods that bring you joy. Um, mm -hmm eat that ice cream with your, your with your children, you know, enjoy that moment because um, the more we restrict foods, typically the more we want them, mm. which can lead to overindulging and or binging. Yeah. 
Yeah. So because I was saying that I could eat ice cream every single day, but I guess if I actually did, then I would no longer want. Absolutely. To yeah. If we tried to treat ice cream like we do broccoli, right? We know that I don't broc eat broccoli or I'm carrots. Not <laughs> <laughs> it's not for everyone. <laughs> no, that's but awesome. normalizing mm -hmm. normalizing ice cream, um, it can really go a long way. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you thank so much for having me. No problem. Thank you for being here, and I wish you the mo the most success with your business. It's always good when people follow their dreams, and then, like you said, here you are. That's right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Good luck with everything. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Place. Easy 1013, the perfect music mix. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. Welcome to Treat Yourself on Rogers TV, where Terry and I go out to local salons and spas and have services done on us so that we can tell you all about them. So that you can treat yourself. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, my life changed forever. During the pandemic, all of our lives changed and many of us turned to alcohol and drugs to cope. As life returns to normal, the increase in substance use from COVID has lingered and some police services report an increase in impaired driving that caused heartbreak and devastation. Now, more than ever, we need your commitment to never drive impaired and to encourage all of your family and friends to do the same. Together, we can save lives. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome back. Our next guest has been on the show before. Leanne Mayer is an accomplished musician in the City of London. She is also the conductor for the Shout Sister Choir, who are having a fundraiser for our women entering post-secondary education for music. This is a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. Welcome back to the show, Leanne. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. Now you are all over the place. Yes, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what is going on with you because June is a busy month. June is a very busy month. I am having my choir finale on June 13th. So I'm the choir director for Shout Sister Choir, which is an all-women's choir, non-auditioning for women or those who identify as women. Mm -hmm. uh, and our mandate is to have fun, uh, form a sense of community, and bring music to people that don't have it in their life. Mm -hmm. And we run 40 weeks a year, and then annually we do have a final concert. And this year, like you said, we are raising money for a bursary for a woman entering music industry art. So we're very excited about partnering with the Boys and Girls Club for that. That is awesome, that is awesome. And it could be any post-secondary institution that they just have to? Yeah, it would have to be music related. Music related, yes. okay, that's nice. And I had the benefit or the, the privilege of being able to see Shout Sisters perform and they are a fun group. They oh, are really? so much fun. <laughs> what I didn't anticipate taking it over was how much fun I was going to have uh -huh. and what a sense of community mm -hmm. that they all are for mm -hmm. each other. They're yeah. just such a supportive group. Nice, nice. And then there's stuff going on with you. You've been nominated for a few things. Yes, I was lucky to be nominated again this year for Contemporary Singer-Songwriter as well as contributor for my work uh, fundraising for at LOSA and mm -hmm. you know, the choir and producing sh shows in London as and well. And this is with the London Music Festival? Uh, this London? is the Forest City London Music Forest. Awards. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, wonderful. And so that, that's going to happen when? When's that? That is June 18th, Sunday, June 18th. Uh, I get to perform as well. I'll let the cat out of the bag. I, I've mm. seen it on social media now. So okay. I'll be performing with Mike Trujan and Tracy Frank with the Shout Sister Choir backing us up to one of my original songs 
So I'm very, very excited. We've been working for months getting mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very excited to showcase it at the Music Awards. Nice. And you're going to be traveling tomorrow. I am. I'm headed up north to do a few gigs. I'm from Northern Ontario, Kirkland Lake. So I'll be stopping in Sudbury, Cobalt, and then Kirkland and taking a few days to see family. And then heading back to the prepare for the London Music Week. Mm -hmm. And when is London Music Week? London Music Week is June 10th to the 18th. Mm -hmm. And I'm also producing the Women in, uh, Women in Music event at the Palisade on Friday, June 16th. And we've got some of London's heavy hitters. We have Anne Menez, Nicole Tan, uh, Justine Chantel, and some surprise performances too that you can check out online. And we're really excited to be showcasing some of the best women in London music. Oh, that's exciting. That's very exciting. So where can people find all of this information? Because you are doing so much. So where can people find out yes. how to find you? So pr I post a lot online on my Facebook page or Instagram. And I just wanted to double back too because I forgot to mention the sponsor for the Women in London Music event mm -hmm. is Fanshawe Community Employment Services. Okay. And for those that don't know, I am an employment consultant part-time as well for Fanshawe. And they are a service open to the public that help with job search, uh, connections to employers, and all the services are no cost to the public. Mm -hmm. So they can reach out to me about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm very lucky to have the event sponsored by Fanshawe Community Employment Services so I can pay the wonderful artists mm -hmm. and take a little bit of stress off of the music awards because they do so much for the city mm -hmm. uh, without making money off of it. So it's a great, it's a great initiative in London. Awesome. And anything going on in the summer? A lot going on in the summer. <laughs> yeah, I'll be all over in the summer doing a bunch of dates. I did, I will be at uh, Wortley Pride on June 10th. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting for me. Uh, and then, yeah, there's some, there'll be some more announcements in the summer, but you can find me somewhere in London or Southern <laughs> Ontario, uh, Northern Ontario, and, and check on my Facebook page to oh, find out the dates. That's awesome. We are so happy for you and so happy for all the success and the wonderful things that you're doing in the community. Thank you so much. Good luck with the concerts. Good luck with the awards. Thank you. Is there anything that London can do for you? Do we have to vote or do we just have to like say strong prayers for you? What do yes. we need to do? Yes, so the voting has wrapped up, but okay. one thing if you want to do something for me, you can go to my Spotify and you can add my songs to your playlists and share with people. I'm I'm also on YouTube or iTunes uh, and my newest single is called Rat Race. It's out this year and it's all about running around doing a million things and not really feeling like you're doing any of them well because you're so torn which mm -hmm. is very relatable for me. <laughs> relatable for a lot of us. Yes, yes. <laughs> well thank you again and good luck Leah. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Hi everyone, my name's Ranger M. I love to knowledge share and that's just what I'm gonna do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. Monday. Hi, my name is Eleanor Gabru. I am this week's guest on Pollinating Purpose. questions about menopause and the menopause journey we've got you covered join us for the modern woman's menopause show and hopefully we can give you some answers and of course my friends don't forget to sparkle it was our 35th anniversary to celebrate we were on our way to mama rosie's where we had our first date that's when we heard coming from the radio so we stopped and listened it helped us get to safety so when i think of I think of our anniversary, because now we have even more to celebrate. This is Rogers TV.
welcome back. Carl Kelly and John Oliveira are co-facilitators of the London, Sarnia, and Wallaceburg Prostate Cancer Support Groups. They are proudly retired and prostate cancer survivors. Their mission is to bring awareness, education, and support to patients and caregivers in their local communities. They also have an event to share. Welcome to the show. Thank you Thank so you much. For having us. So tell us a little bit about the support groups. I know, John, do you want to introduce that? Okay. Um, so the support group has been around for a number of years, um, in both Sarnia, mm -hmm. Wallaceburg, and London. London support group uh, was around 10, 12 years ago and then kind of went on the wayside. Mm. Um, we got rejuvenated uh, about six or seven years ago, I guess shortly after my cancer diagnosis and, and my treatment. So I, got, I connected with John and we kind of got the London uh, area back up and running again as well. Uh, we have since merged the three locations under LSW as opposed to different Sarnia, Wallaceburg and London. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the advent of the pandemic caused us to do that because we continued to have our meetings via Zoom over the last two and a half years. Okay. So it allowed us to bring the three groups together. So we didn't miss a beat through the, through the COVID, but it was due to technology we were able to do that. Mm -hmm. We now run a hybrid model, uh, both Zoom and and face-to-face -face okay. on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, and we have guest speakers that come in from the local hospitals, urologists, oncologists, mm -hmm. physiotherapists, genetic counselors. So we've had a lot of good local support right. from the healthcare system here mm -hmm. that really sees our support group as another step in, uh, I guess, their journey as far as diagnosis is concerned, the treatment plan, and we bring a, 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 an opportunity for mental well, well-being because right. there is an impact on yeah. our health as far as uh, sure. uh, from a mental standpoint as well. So, for sure. but, so it's. Uh, the, the good thing is, is the support group is growing. The bad thing is the support group is growing because more and more mm -hmm. people are being diagnosed with this mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. um, and there seems to be a higher incidence of the disease since COVID. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of it's because guys were not being tested mm -hmm. or reluctant to go to get tested because of the environment that if the yeah. doctors or the hospitals and stuff as well. Yeah. But I'm also of the, the opinion that the, the incidence is higher because I'm going to say six, seven, eight years ago, PSA testing became secondary in a lot of areas where PSA testing was not being done for a variety of medical reasons, so they decided not to do that. But now we're finding the, uh, they're being tested and it's later stage and it's more difficult to treat. Yeah. Um, and it's been, a, not a well, it's been a well known fact that if you get early intervention, it's a very survivable cancer. Yeah. Um, if it's not detected early, it can be devastating, I guess, yeah. to, to the individual and stuff as well, so. Yeah, prior to us coming on, you were talking about trying to ensure that um, younger men are getting yes. tested, right? Yes, and, and that's, that's part of the mission that I think we're trying to do with a support group, because the memories we have now are post-surgery, post-radiation, chemo, and, and variety of treatments, but we're finding a younger set of demographics, a younger population is now waiting too long to get tested mm. um, for fear of a variety of things. Right. Sometimes it's a fear of paying the $35 for a PSA test, which is unfortunate that mm -hmm. that's the avenue that they take, uh, but for fear of some of the side effects that come when, from, from prostate cancer, especially at a younger age. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I think it's important for the message is that don't be afraid to get tested. It's a blood test, um, and I think you have to be an advocate for your own health when you're, when you're speaking to your doctor, is that I want to have this test, especially if there's some family history yeah. uh, that has been associated with that. So. Sure. And even, not even the male population, but even the female population, because there's, there's a correlation between breast cancer and, and prostate cancer that's kind of been driven out through research and stuff mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. if you have a sister or a mother that's been involved with it, as a male, you should get tested okay. as well too. So. Okay, and you have an event that's yes. coming up for Father's Day. We have the Dash for Dad. This is the 25th uh, anniversary of the Dash for Dad, and it's going to be on June the 18th, mm -hmm. and uh, we were looking forward to it. We, it's a walk around at, um, at uh, Springbank Park, and uh, uh, oh, there's going to be a live uh, sign-in auction. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think the important part of that, too, is the funds that are raised stay mm -hmm. local for local research, uh -huh. um, so it doesn't get 
spread center across the country. Yeah. And I mean, th th we have some of the best oncologists, urologists in so here in Southwestern mm -hmm. Ontario mm -hmm. that are globally recognized around the world. Yeah. So it, it's important that we, we keep those research right. dollars here locally as well too. A and you know, over in the six and a half years since I've had my surgery, the things that have the enhancements that have been made in research to me mm -hmm. is is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, new treatments, immunotherapies, new drugs, new medications and stuff as well. Um, it's really taken hold here in southwestern Ontario. And, and one of the things too on that, and it just, uh, um, I mean, it's an individual cancer. Um, us as males think we're all inflicted with the same disease, the treatment is the same, but it's not. Mm -hmm. The treatment pattern can be very different for mm -hmm various people uh, and the side effects can be different for, from, from different people as well too so right. it's important to have that medical team behind you as far as make an informed decision yeah. as to what direction you want to take if you're diagnosed with it as well. So. Well, Londoners are very supportive and I know that they will support this event. So there's a website that they can go to yes. and uh, find out more, become involved yes. and uh, spread that awareness. Yeah, okay. yep. dashfordad.ca is yeah. very easy to get to. And our website, once again, is linked to it. It's PC Support. Mm -hmm. uh, group.ca, mm -hmm. which is local here as well too, so you have mm -hmm. multiple avenues to get access to the information. And you can create your own team or you can join our team. Our, our uh, prostate group uh, team is called the Prostate Crusaders, so you can either go on there and donate or, um, or join our team. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate You're welcome. It. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. I started volunteering for Rogers last year in March, I want to say. So I grew up playing sports. I loved hockey growing up. Uh, my dad was a really big hockey player, so he got me into it, and I would always watch hockey games and that sort of thing. But I really want to branch out of my comfort zone, and that's what Rogers has also allowed me to do. I've learned to think on my feet really quick, um, how to kind of put myself out there in ways that I wouldn't before, and just be fearless in terms of that. I would say just go, show up, do it once. If you don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to go again, but you might just absolutely love it. There's so much diversity and variety uh, within that you can try and you're almost just bound to find something that you're gonna love. Most people that are uh, have received treatment for drug use problems are probably going to have a lapse. Join addictions counselor Dean Anderson for Invisible, breaking through the stigma of addiction on Rogers TV. Welcome back. Do you happen to listen to electronic music? Do you know what electronic music is? Well, Alison Oosterman is a creative entrepreneur and leadership mentor who is here to speak about the electric market. It is London's only free all-ages electronic music festival that aims to uplift and enhance our community through music, dance, collaboration, and the arts. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. So tell us, what is electronic music? So electronic music mostly consists of DJs who, who play. So they play on a controller and their large sound system, and they're often playing a mix of songs. They call it like a set. So they're, the ones at Electric Market will be playing for a full hour um, between the hours of 4 o'clock and 11 p.m. outdoors, and then we have an after party happening at Rum Runners in the music hall until 2 a.m. Oh my goodness, okay, yes. so, so what is the electronic festival? Electronic music festival? Yes, yeah. so Electric Market happens outdoors at Covent Garden Market. Um, uh -huh. We're going into our third edition in our second year. Okay. And the festival really consists of the, the musicians, so the DJs and the performers, and then we have over 20, 20 food vendors, oh, sorry, not food vendors. Um, we have food vendors, and then we have over 20 unique craft vendors as well. 
Yeah, and we have performers and live artists who will be painting. There's going to be like an interactive art area. We're working alongside XR as a partner, and so they're uh, designing a unique AR experience that um, guests are going to be able to participate in as well. Oh my goodness, so yeah. this is gonna be a party. It's gonna be a huge party. <laughs> okay, and so when's the date? So Saturday, June 10th. Saturday, June 10th at Covent Garden Market. Yes. And this wouldn't be possible with some important people, without some important people. <sighs> yes, we are so grateful for our sponsors because without them, it, it wouldn't happen. You know, we mm -hmm. really are grateful for the support of local businesses who have really jumped in and, um, you know, sp sponsored the event mm -hmm. and and see the value in what we're doing. And so I did want to, I did write, bring a little list. Yeah. I would love to just say yeah, sure. um, thank you to like Downtown London was a big sponsor this year, as well as APOL Music, Grazing Ace, Invictus Barbershop, Addictive Tattoo, La Borreria, Vinyl Destination, and the London Arts Council. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. We need those sponsors to support and make these things happen. <gasps> we really do. Um, you know, as the director of the festival this year, this is my first year in this role, you know, bringing everything together in a short time, it wouldn't have been at all possible if we didn't have the, the rallying of these mm -hmm. businesses mm -hmm. that see the value in, in the aliveness that is created through mm -hmm. through community and music and dance and and the beauty of the you know the collaborative efforts of the artists right. you know mm -hmm. and so is there a dance floor huge dance floor huge dance floor huge okay. dance floor so we're facing the towers and the towers uh -huh. are going to be all lit up we have a, uh -huh. a bigger sound system this year which i'm so excited about and so all the dance floor is going to be facing the market towers and the whole space is left open so vendors will be kind of surrounding the grounds uh -huh. and a big dance floor that can fit over a thousand people for sure oh wow yeah. <laughs> so we're talking a big party it's going to be london's biggest like free electronic music dance party nice yeah so someone could, we come during the day we can go through the market and, mm -hmm. and look at the different artisans and things like that. Mm -hmm. We listen to the different DJs mm -hmm. and then there's an after party. So it's like an all day, all night event. It is, yeah. So there's really those two pieces that make up like this, the whole of the festival. And um, we're really excited about it because we, London used to have block party for the electronic music scene and they did similar thing. They had the daytime festival and then they mm -hmm. would go to music hall afterwards for the mm -hmm. after party. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of emulating that a little bit, okay. but we're doing it for free during the day, which yes. is such a beautiful offering for mm -hmm. anybody who's curious and just yes. wants to get playful and you know enjoy like the wonder that comes from, from the electronic music space. It's really yes. something that's magical. Well, looking forward to it. Yes, thank looking you. Forward. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. Thank you for watching and for listening. Please show your support to our guests by visiting and sharing their social media pages and supporting their events. I will be here again with you next week, but in the meantime, please like, comment, and share this episode with your networks. Be well, take care, and see you next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. As each day passes, we have one guarantee. The sun will rise in the morning and set in the evening. No matter where you are on this earth, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter the weather, the pollution, the clouds, there is a sunrise and a sunset. No matter what you do, like the sun, you will also have a time to rise and a time to set. It was John's graduation. We were so proud. We all got together for a picnic. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and we listened. It helped us get to safety.